Hey guys, Peter here. Welcome to another episode of Peter Chats. So recently I spoke to a friend of mine and his older daughter is in college and she feels like she might flunk some classes. I told him that I actually felt the same way when I was in college. I remember my first class, which was Calculus 2. The professor walked in with shaggy hair, an ugly sweater, kind of like this one that I'm wearing now, and he opened the textbook and started writing a bunch of formulas on the board. And he spoke really rapidly as he wrote. I quickly realized I had no idea what was going on. The next day I went to an 8 a.m. recitation, which is really early for a college student. And there were probably three or five of us there in that class. But the TA did not make it any better. He answered our questions matter-of-factly and looked at us like we were dumb for not getting it so quickly. Um, I did get a B in that class. But o over the years, I, I eventually realized some things and was able to pick up some tips and aids um, to help me navigate through school and get, get reasonably decent grades. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. If you want me to discuss any topics, please leave a comment. Thanks a lot, guys. I know good grades isn't everything, but it does give you a little bit of a confidence boost. It makes you feel as though you were, you're there for a reason, and, and it does make you feel like you're not wasting your parents' hard-earned money on your, on your tuition. In the long run, no, no one's going to care about your grades in college. In the short run, it can help you get a good internship, a first job, or if you're applying for grad school, it can help a lot. You know, the reality is most college students are not great at time management. I wasn't either. I remember rolling out of bed at 10 a.m., going to my first class, my PJs, and then coming back immediately to my room to take a nap. That was a pretty bad use of my first half of my day, but that was just the reality of my routine. And I don't think there was any miracle inspiration or chat that would have, that would have shocked me into better time after. My studying habits weren't, better, weren't that great either. I would probably study, you know, eight to 10 hours with groups of people, but in reality, we goofed around most of the time. And I got like two or three hours of real studying in. Now, just against the reality that your time management and studying skills may not be optimal, a couple of things you can do to, to alleviate it. I realized that you didn't need to take your class schedule in the recommended order. And this was actually a big benefit because some classes can be easier to take in the spring and the fall. I don't know why, but for whatever reason, maybe the teacher is better, or the grading curve is not as difficult, or if you just wait a semester to you're smarter and you have a better understanding of how to navigate studying and just juggling your classes. So if you're having a really tough time with a particular class, if you can, just take it one or two semesters later. Another thing I realized looking back is that I probably took four you know, type of classes. One is a conceptually core class, like math and science. Now these type of classes, you either get it or you don't. If you get it, and it becomes a really easy class that doesn't take a lot of time, and you get an easy A. If you don't get it, you can spend a lot of time trying to get it. And if you do get it, your level of getting it may not get you to the A. You may still end up getting a B. The second type of class is reading heavy, writing heavy, or memorization heavy. For these type of classes, you simply have to put in the time. Unless you're gifted with the ability to, to memorize a lot really quickly, it's just how much time you want to put into it. Luckily, I didn't have a lot of these classes. And while I would probably enjoy the, the content of these classes, I just wouldn't enjoy the mandatory writing or reading or memorization at all. The third type of class was team-based classes. For me, these were management and marketing classes. In retrospect, these classes actually took up a lot of time. We had a lot of meetings and we weren't always productive in our meetings. And the teams were usually assigned, and so we didn't actually pick who was in our team. I remember in my marketing class, when we were writing our final paper, we pulled an all-nighter, but we spent half the time fighting about the paper and the second half writing it. Um, the, the fourth type of class I remember was um, lab-based classes. So these can be chemistry labs, physics labs, or if you're an art major, these can be time spent in the studio. I realized that I couldn't have four or five or one type of class any semester. My brain just couldn't do one type of of studying or thinking all semester long. It needed some balance in it. So that if my brain was tired of math class, I could take a break and, and I could turn on a different part of my brain for a reading or writing class. Another really important thing I realized is that you can't do this alone. There are a lot of resources you can use. 
TAs are an amazing resource. Now, some TAs may be difficult, um, but most of my TAs, apart from my math TA, were actually pretty good. TAs generally want to help you do well. They've taken the class before and they know common defaults. They can tell you which concepts to focus on and what type of trip questions the professors might use to differentiate the A's and the B's. Another resource that I found really helpful was speaking to older students. Usually they'll tell you a class that you can take to fulfill a general requirement to get an easy A, or if there's a really difficult teacher for a particular class, they'll tell you if, if you can avoid that teacher, do so. A lot of my professors actually told the class to study old exams. And for whatever reason, some students just don't do it. But for those that did, I know they did a lot better on the exams. Because if you study old exams, you'll know how the exam questions will be phrased and how a good answer should be phrased. Just knowing this takes a lot of the unknown out of the equation. Finally, study in small groups. Usually for every class, there's a couple of students that seem to get it really well. And you don't have to study by yourself. You don't have to do homework by yourself. Just go ask these students for help. Study with them and work with them. You realize that they end up becoming like a teacher to you. They end up teaching you most of the concepts in the class and it'll save you a lot of time and headache. Hopefully this video helped you. Um, I know that it may feel like everything is just falling down around you, but you can get through it. Don't worry too much and enjoy your college years. If you like this video, please subscribe and leave a comment. Thanks a lot guys, and see you soon.